I think that's looking really tidy and that's given us a really good base to start our hardscape. So as many of you know, there's only one tank left for us to build in the studio. Obviously we've completed the 900 from Aquariums for Life, but it's currently a storage tank for all the plants that are gonna be going in this beast of a new tank, also from Aquariums for Life. It's 1200 centimeters, no it's not. It's 1200 millimeters across, 120 centimeters, 600 back, 600 down. Awesome cabinet as well, which I can now remove this for, for this video. <laughs> so basically I just put up a black screen like that because whenever I was filming, my rainbow river tank here all you could see was a white reflection in the bottom so i've just got that screen there to put up every time i'm filming this tank but now that the builds for this one we can remove it right first of all i need to take all this stuff out from inside most of the stuff is going to be used inside the tank anyway so all good so what i'm removing here guys is just loads of packs of volcano mineral from jbl and also a load of tropica aqua soil i'm gonna have to lug all this back in in a minute just obviously without packaging on there's also a couple of nano aquariums that i'm going to be setting up at some point in another location well, that's everything cleared out, but I think it's pretty clear we're missing one thing, aren't we? Yes, the lighting. So for this build, we're going back to our trusty old LED floodlights. 20 watt these are, 6,000 Kelvin, so they give that more sort of white light rather than a yellowy light that you might see on normal floodlights. Now, since I actually made these before, my wiring skills and electrical skills have improved, so I will be redoing all of this wiring for it. I've got some nice black wiring as well that will go nicely for it. But then how are we going to fix it to the top? So I'm just going to build a couple of brackets. I've got some wood, so I'm just going to go straight up with a bit of wood and then come across at 45 degrees. They'll be black as well, so you're not really going to see them. And then we can have two nice spotlights, decent height above the tank, It'll be a good amount of light. It works really well on my discus tank for that specific amount of light. And hopefully we get really nice growth like I've got in there. And this, this tank could look absolutely amazing. I've got a feeling, guys, that this tank is going to be my best yet. Click subscribe. So you can see here I'm measuring out two pieces of wood. One of 70 centimetres length and one of 30 centimetres. These will act as the main frame for our lighting bracket. Make sure you cut all your wood nice and square and sand off all the edges to get a real neat finish. We can then use the right angle triangle piece of wood we've cut off to lock the two pieces of wood into the correct position. Then all we need to do is slap some black paint on it and we're pretty much good to go. So as mentioned, I'm going to reuse these floodlights that I've used before. They're 20 watt, 6,500 Kelvin color temperature. When I originally wired them, I just used some spare stuff that I had. It was gray wires. It just doesn't look good, does it? So now I'm going to attach these black wires to it. I can then attach them to the frames we've created and pin back the wire so it runs all neatly alongside it. This should give us a really neat finish and to be honest it's so black all of this that it's just going to blend into the background anyway and hopefully you won't even notice them. I then bent the frames of the floodlights. This means that they'll sit square on the custom brackets that we made. I'm saying custom because it sounds a lot better than bits of wood. I then attached the lights to the custom brackets and then proceeded to tape the wires to the frames. I was going to use wire tacks, but you know, the ones I've got are too small and I can't go out and get any more. So as I always say, make do with the stuff you've got and get on with the job. Now to attach the lights. I measured an equal distance from each side of the tank and placed each light bracket 30 centimeters above. I always find that 30 centimeters above a tank is a really good place for lighting. It kind of stops any algae issues. It means you don't have like a high powerful light, but then I don't really like to go for high energy setups anyway. Well there we have it guys, I think that's looking really tidy and that's given us a really good base to start our hardscape. But before we do that, I just want to show you a few things in the dirty tanks we've got behind us. Obviously, you've seen in the last video, we set up the no filter bowl aquarium. 
but this dirt aquarium has been running now for about a month. Now I've just received some S weapons from Tropica. I've not had great success with this plant before in the past, but everything is growing so well in this tank. I want to give it a go and see if we can get it to work. And here it is guys, look, it is the tissue culture version of the S-Repens, Steragyne, I think it's pronounced, but yeah, so we've got loads of little nice rootlet-y ones. Now every time I've had S-Repens before, they've already come in like their emerged form and they didn't adapt to my water very well, and I'm hoping this tissue culture version does. So let's get them in this tank, I'm going to put them in these little gaps that we can see dotted around and I think they should look really good. So I think the s weapons looks really good at plugging those gaps. This one here is a little bit twisted at the moment, but that'll straighten out as the days go by and it goes towards the light. Oh, guess what, guys? Many of you will know if you follow the channel that I put a vampire shrimp into the Rainbow River about three weeks ago, something like that. Maybe a month, I don't know. Either way, he went into a little cave and I haven't seen him since, but guess what? He's out! And here he is, look. Since putting all these plants in here, just for storage, there he is, look, fanning away. It's almost like that's his cave now. So, you know, hopefully this means that once I remove these, because soon they're going to be going in the tank, obviously. MD. <laughs> yeah, once I remove these, hopefully he'll stay out and he'll see that, you know, there's no dangers out here anymore. And then we should be able to see a lot more of him. So he's a nice orangey colour by the looks of things. I didn't actually know what colour he was, because I only saw him briefly and he molted straight after that. So seems to be some nice sort of bluey tinges as well to his whiskers, are they? Hopefully he can now enjoy his home a lot more but as I've said to you guys before just because we're building something doesn't mean work in a fish room stops the cave is looking disgusting let's clean it up now basically the cave aquarium had string algae all over it I have mentioned this before and it's one of the reasons that I want to break it down but before I break it down I want to get it right just to know that I can it's a good experiment it's good for you to have this sort of experience and be able to fix it it did have a bad cyano issue but I managed to fix that and now it's just the algae I think I've narrowed it down though I think I've not been using enough light in the tank which means that the plants weren't growing and using any excess nutrients however the algae could so hopefully now I've abolished that and it's starting to look awesome again So that's all of that taken care of, back to the job at hand. So we've got all of our hardscaping from Aquarium Gardens, guys. We've got Millennium Stone in this top box, and I've got loads of Manzanita wood as well in that bottom box. I've not even opened these yet because I wanted to open them with you for the nice surprise. But the first thing we need to do is put the base layer in the aquarium. So for that, I'm gonna be using the Volcano Mineral from JBL. Now this is supposed to be like super porous volcanic rock. And the idea being that the water can still circulate at the bottom layer and you won't get sort of like pockets of anaerobic activity. I don't really know. <laughs> I'm trying to sound intelligent. I don't know. All I know is that porous rock allows for masses of bacterial colonization. I do know that. So that's one reason why this stuff is brilliant because the surface area of each piece is huge compared to say a solid rock. Now this isn't absolutely essential. JBL would love for me to tell you that you have to have it, but I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. You don't have to have it, but like with most things in life, you do get what you pay for. This is a superior product and it will mean that we've got a fantastically biologically filtered aquarium. If you imagine the amount of filter media you can get in your filter, and then you could times it by about 10 for the amount of media we're gonna be able to put in the, as a base layer and still have the water circulating around through it. And you know, the more bacteria you've got, the better. You can't have too much bacteria, can you? So let's just get this stuff in. So inspiration for this tank comes from fellow UK aquascaper George Farmer. He scaped one of his tanks a long while ago with a similar theme to what I'm doing here. I'll be using his system for substrate and creating the general overall nature aquarium theme that he also went for. There'll be a slight variation of course because I'm indenting the middle section to hopefully give a lot more open space at the front for the fish to swim in. So I'm going to be using three bags of the JBL Volcano Mineral in this scape and as you can see I'm pushing it right to the back to bank it up. This will give us the much needed height that we'll need to create the look that we're going for with the scape. So let's talk about this awesome aquarium, guys. It's made by Aquariums for Life. It's 100 centimeters across. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> 60 centimeters front to back, 60 centimeters in height. It's a total of 430 liters. I don't know what that is in gallons, but I'll put it up on screen. It's also got these really nice soft closed doors and the whole inside is lined with solid oak. There you go, I'm hitting it as proof that it's solid oak. <laughs> 
Anyway, the glass is OptiWhite glass, 12 mil thick, and the silicon work is absolutely perfect and flawless. There's not a single imperfection in it anywhere. If you're interested in buying one, guys, or even taking a look at their website, I'll leave a link below. They ship everywhere, and the prices are really, really good as well. So I'm going to be using the Hugo Kamishi decorative sand. This stuff looks insanely good and I really like using it on natural style scapes. Obviously at the moment it doesn't look fantastic just on its own but once we've got our rock border in there I've also got a coarser version of this stuff to really add some details in and amongst all the rocks. That way we can get that really nice graded effect as we come towards the front of the aquarium. Also, I might mix in a lighter sand with it at a later date just to give it even more texture. You'll notice as well that I'm not adding a really thick layer to the front. This is a technique that's used by many aquascapers and it creates a really neat finish. It also means that cleaning and maintenance is a lot easier and you can even just remove the sand at a later date and replace it quite easily if you want to. So absolutely granted, it does look a bit funky guys at the moment, I will admit that, but this is the base remember. So what we've done, we've gone up a third of the way at the back with the substrate layer which is the volcano mineral and then the decorative sand at the front actually overlaps that now the reason for that is that in this whole area here we're going to be putting rocks that will divide the two types of substrate these rocks will actually act as a retaining wall because we're going to be putting the tropica aquasaur that we've got here and i've got the fine grain stuff because it's my favorite i really like it it just locks plants in really well that's going to be going on top as well which means that by the time we've got our rocks up to about this level and then our aquasaur on top of that we'll probably be looking at having all the substrate totally to about halfway up the tank that's like 30 centimeters of height there which is brilliant just means that we're going to get really great height in our scape. Now you may be wondering why do we want height in the aquarium? Well height adds interest so the higher up we can create our focal points the more your eyes are drawn around the tank and it's a lot more interesting in my opinion to be able to look over the whole tank rather than just small areas on the bottom. And obviously this is all going to make sense as we progress through the build guys so make sure you're subscribed for all the updates as they come. And this stuff here next to Timmy's tank is the stuff I was talking about that's coarser. You can see there look how it sort of matches the fine grain stuff and I've also got some other sand as well to go with it to just get even more detail as we go along. So what I'm really trying to do in this build guys is create the clean lines that you see in the ADA tanks, but then try to give it tons of detail as well so it looks more like a biotopey style. Now what I mean by biotope, for those of you that don't know, is you're trying to create more of a natural look that you might see as a snapshot underwater somewhere in nature. So the thing about a nature aquarium is it's very clean looking. Most of the time in nature stuff doesn't look that perfect. I mean don't get me wrong there are plenty of nature aquariums out there that look fantastic with tons of detail but then some of the styles are very clean as well which looks great in your living room but you know it's not as naturalistic as I quite like it to be. Now the way we can do this is just to take our time with things don't rush it. That's why I want to release this all as a continuous series rather than one extra long build video which feels a little bit more rushed. I like this style more, I could take my time with everything, explain it all in more detail to you guys and why I'm doing it. So that's all our substrate system in place guys. Coming up on the next video, I can unbox all the hardscape, we can get all that inside and just start creating something amazing. As I said before, I think this is gonna turn out to be one of my best tanks yet. 
I've got all the best plants from Tropica. I've got amazing hardscape. We've got Millennium Stone and gnarled Manzanita wood. So that should look really impactful and awesome. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, you need to click the subscribe button now. Notifications as well, because you don't want to miss this series. I'm going to number this series as well so that we can watch them in order and so that everyone's clear on what order to watch them in. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.